Welcome everyone to another episode of How the Hell Was This a Hit? And I'm Kirk Buckner. I run Not in Hall of Fame.com, the Fictitious Athlete Hall of Fame, the Fictitious Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the United States Athletic Hall of Fame. Big things happening afoot on all three of those soon, uh, likely in the month of January. Uh, but I'm joined by Brad Nelson, Andrea Tessman. And because of Brad, I, so I got happy a little inspired. Because you see, he always talks about his love or rather hatred of Neil Young. So I didn't give him Neil Young. He always calls him Sad Tiny Tim. So I said, well, what if we look at Tiny Tim, who actually did have a top 20 hit? Yeah, I have to blame myself. I, uh, I It defies the laws of God and nature. It kind of does. Tiny Tim, my impression of him before sort of doing a deep dive in who the hell he was and how the sort of how he got here was, this guy is very, very strange and I don't get it. Mm-hmm. After, after hours of research, this guy is very strange, and I don't get it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hubert Curry was his name, born in Manhattan, and from everything I could in 1932. So from everything I could tell, he was always very, very, very strange, a very eccentric individual. I wondered if this was going to be part of an act. It is not. Hang it on. Is. They call you eccentric when you're rich. So Tiny Tim was not eccentric for a long time in his life. Then, you know, he, first he was just mentally yeah. ill. Then he was eccentric once he started you know, he had money. Well, and then he, I don't think he died with a whole hell of a lot. Nah, he had a little, but yeah, not, not, not tons. Three marriages will do that to you. Was it only three? I thought it was more than that. No, that's why I stopped it too. And dude got pervy with his marriages, man. Yes, he did. But I guess before yeah. we get there, he was, this guy, at least he knew who he was. The guy he was in 1964 doesn't seem to be much different than who he was when he died. Or when he was a child. Or when he was a child. Uh, his parents thought that he might have been insane. They considered sort of do, admitting him that did not happen. He learned that he could play the ukulele like that's hard. And but mostly <laughs> what? Okay. Hey, here. there are some virtuoso ukulele players out there. Is he not just that? I cannot play an a, a instrument to save my life. I've tried the uke because people said it was simple. It's not. I mean, it kind of is, but comparatively, there's only four strings instead of six on a guitar. But that being said. I never heard anything that he was a virtuoso ukulele player. However, he was self-taught everything. So the kid was like super weird as a kid. Mm -hmm. He dropped out of school because he couldn't pass his sophomore year uh, for the Canadians mm -hmm. in the audience. I believe that is um, grade nine, grade 10, grade 10. 10, I think. I think it's grade 10. Um, and he basically just was a shut in that um studied the music from like 1900 to 1930 so like the 30-ish years before he was born pretty much um, from the great american songbook really yeah and then he uh he taught himself started t teaching himself guitar at six mm -hmm. um he played that he played banjo and then he discovered the ukulele and that became his signature instrument um he then basically just had this love and passion for music but was weird and he got a bunch of menial jobs and he basically went out into like Times Square and played at like circus shows and played a lot of amateur nights and just tried That's to do anything. That's got his name. Well he he went by about a billion different names. Um, mm. I think Tiny Tim he actually got at his first paid gig which paid him $96 a month for six six-hour shifts a week. Hmm. I think but even he at the time, that's pretty minimal. A little person. So the act was a little person and then him. And yep. because he's a he's taller and what have you, the uh, ringmaster or whatever, dubbed or billed him as Tiny Tim. Six one. Yeah. Oh, well, he looks much taller than that. He he's does. very skinny. Okay, and then he... Yeah. He kind of looks... If you were to take Weird Al and cross him with Gonzo. Fair. And give him the sensibilities of 
Andy Kaufman after massive head trauma. That, that checks out. Okay, I like that. I couldn't he, um, find when he learned how to, that he had this, as much as uh, we're probably going to rag him on, 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 on him a bit, and quite a lot maybe, the falsetto was impressive. First off, yeah. uh, vocal control in, in general, not just the falsetto, but also the vibrato he could maintain. So he basically apparently prayed to God for a new vocal sound that would make him stand out from the rest. And then that's when he did discovered that he could sing in that falsetto and it's there's a lot of men that sing in falsetto but his is weird and it's that his, that constant no. it's not a it's not a controlled vibrato it's not a it's not a trained vocalist vibrato it's more like someone's shaking you by the neck like mm -hmm. it's that's not vibrato that's like that's not a real vibrato that's just that's just manipulating your vocal cords to well, hey, vibrate the that's vibrato, but to like oscillate. So it's um, yeah, it's a very different sound. But I went through it some of his other stuff. Got attention. Mm -hmm. it, it did, and I went through some of his other stuff. Now I cannot listen to Tiny Tim all the way through, so I skipped through a little bit. I may have missed the the subtleties and what have you. Um, but what I did see in there was that in some of his songs, he was able to control that a little bit more or it seemed like there was more vocal control going on with tiptoe i mean tiptoe was was meant for attention i think it was just there for like a freak show kind of thing i think so because i think in the re actual recorded version he's not doing the i, I can't do the, the what you just did no he does not as much i don't think as much though as like when you'd see him do a live performance and actually in the re recording, it's there, but he does have a lot of vocal control. I didn't mean to say, like, he's actually quite a talented musician. There's song, I couldn't find it, but I saw reference of songs where he would actually do, like, call and answer with his normal baritone. Oh, and then the... Uh... With... Oh, I watched it. I watched part of but it. But was it Sonny and Cher? Wasn't mm -hmm. it? Didn't he do that with I Got You, Babe? There was I, another Yeah, one. he did do it with that. He also, apparently, he was so weird that uh, somebody actually... I saw this documentary on him. He, like a friend of his caught him sort of like having a dinner party by himself where he'd be doing all the voices. <laughs> so I, I think what's really interesting to me and then granted, uh, well, two of us are over 50 and Andrea is the young and here. Living in the sunlight. Yeah. Was uh, a call and answer. Okay. What I find interesting, so we've talked a lot about, about this before, the limited spots. This is the late '60s. You've got three network television, uh, uh, network television channels. Few independents, and that's about it. He gets on Merv Griffin, and it's a, a total disaster. Apparently, he was working the uh, uh, what do you call it, the Greenwich Village uh, thing. So he did get some attention. Uh, did get a late get a get a record deal, which I don't know how that happened. But again, there was nobody who looked like him, nobody who sounded like him, and maybe they thought, well, we could get something. I mean, like. Novelty records were doing well. We talked one about recently, I think uh, just, just a month ago with they're coming to take me away. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that this guy even thought this was a novelty. I I think he did. I think he was pretty desperate for a unique, he, he knew he was never going to be a rock star. He was infatuated with Americana and that style of music. So he was trying to create a niche look. He was wearing like pasty white cake makeup and dressing like a hobo. And putting on an English accent. Who yeah. was there long so, before a lot of people even were doing that yet? There was, um, there's a lot of speculation as to whether the entire, his entire persona was a caricature, which oh. apparently it wasn't. He was um, gone before it was cool. Yeah, he was just a weird, sad, lonely man. Um, Maybe. The, yeah, that's what I was going to mention, because, I mean, in much the same way that, like, hearkening back to the Kaufman comment before, in the same way that Kaufman needed the, he wanted to be on the edge, but he also needed the approval. I think I get the same thing from Tiny Tim. In his stage performances, at least, he fed off of like the, the the louder the audience got the crazier he went like 
he had a whole routine of ripping off his shirt and what have you. And like he did a version of, do you think I'm sexy later on? Yeah. Uh, actually yeah. Uh, the one I did, there's only one thing he did. I did like his rendition. I must've been on Ed Sullivan. I'm not sure of uh, earth angel was very interesting and he's okay. using an Elvis effect. I don't know if that was designed to be Elvis, but I but think we're doing the falsetto. A it massive really... opportunity here because in Guantanamo Bay, they use all kinds of different music to torture prisoners. And I think if we could have gotten Tiny Tim and Yoko Ono together, people would confess to anything. You know, the funny thing is, I was looking to see if Yoko Ono actually ever had a top 40 hit and she didn't, so I couldn't do it. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> not saying she didn't. I'm not saying she broke up the Beatles. I, I'm the Beatles. just saying that she broke up the Beatles. Ah, did she though after watching the documentary i don't think she did i just think that chuck berry should have probably taken a two by four to her if you want to know what what that's in reference to just google uh chuck berry yoko ono and i know this oh. is what you're referring to i think it was them on the mike douglas show and oh. the sound person actually cut her mic halfway through that song so, and she went looking for another mic Yep. She knew what happened. She's like, well, shit, I gotta get in here. <laughs> Didn't we reference that when we were doing Chuck Berry? It was... Yeah, uh probably. Yeah, it, yeah it's a good clip. It's worthwhile right. watching. Which, which, yeah, which allowed me to sort of like say to people, so what are you doing tonight? I'm talking about my dingling. <laughs> but going back to... Uh, let's, let's reference... Rise. Let's reference uh, this uh, talk about talk about TV shows and go back to Kirk's comment about limited TV time. He was on Johnny Carson. Yeah. Uh, five times? Three. No, more than three times. And oh. his wedding mm -hmm. was aired live to something like 12 million viewers. And it was the most viewed episode of the, the Johnny list. Carson show. Ever. Of any late, of any late night show, it was the highest rated show. Uh, so like, basically, if there was a TV show or a variety show, he was, he was doing it. He was, I don't want to say that he was a top 20 person, but people in America... Knew who every he variety was. show, every yeah. talk show, everyone. Yeah. He yeah. was like a carrot top. People make fun, but they'll tune in to see him. But there was only one, right? And that's sort of like where I find it so interesting. Like right now, anybody, you can be homeless. And as long as you still got a cell phone, and some homeless people do, you can find a way to sort of uh, get on TikTok or whatever and be famous. Mm -hmm. Right now, would Tiny Tim even make it with all the competition out there? He what he okay. was able to do again, just being pretty much that generation's weirdo. He only wanted one. If okay, well, Lady Gaga kind of was this generation's weirdo uh, for a little while. The meat dress thing and what have you, you know. Lady Gaga is massively talented, whether you like her or not. Oh, I know she's just yeah. insanely talented, and I absolutely love everything that she does. I mean, you know, watching her in a Star was a Star is Born was fantastic. I did like that. I I was surprised mm -hmm. how much I liked. But it. um, yeah. Speaking of Tiny Tim's wedding on the Tonight Show, pervy old man. Yes, thirty-seven, marrying a seventeen-year-old. Yes, who he met when she was sixteen. And mm -hmm. in the documentary I watched, they talk about how he had this ideal of a woman. So, I mean, this guy apparently was a big womanizer. I, I thought for sure I was going to find out that he was really gay. His last wife, his third wife, um, said he was half what? Gay? Only half gay. Oh. But never, <laughs> I, didn't, I couldn't find anyone who said that they, any. Yeah, just, just from the bottom down or from the waist yeah. down. Whichever. Uh, saying that he did have this ideal of what a woman should be. A lot of that was really based on his, and you referenced this earlier, Andrea. He was super religious which is crazy to me learning that so he had a certain idea of what he thought a woman should be which also meant controlling subservient so when miss vicky decided to, that she's going to be somebody and have not her own the voice, chip lady hmm? not the potato chip lady let's not drag her name through the mud oh sorry <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it, they had a baby at 19 named Tulip something. Yep. Surprise, surprise. You pretty much and then, or, and oh. then she, they got divorced at 
two years later, not much longer. Not much longer. I think they were only married for about five years. And I didn't read much about his second wife. Did you see much? Not really. Uh, but I skimmed over it. I think I was still traumatized from having watched a couple of partial videos. Same pattern. So then the third wife, Mm. the third wife was, again, much younger. I don't know how much younger, but you have to think. So Tiny Tim only actually got any sort of fame when he was in his late 30s. -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now if his third wife um, was a fan of his when she was a child, he's got to be about four. 50 I think he was when he around you know 50s when he got married and she couldn't have been more than early 20s didn't they but they did stay together till the end I believe yes yeah, yeah she was with them she was literally with him when he died mm-hmm. I think what was also sort of interesting once he sort of like that arc went down I was reading pretty much he'll he would do anything just for any kind of fame or, or anything so like uh he, he's almost like Samuel L. Jackson yeah I'll do this job only Samuel L. Jackson usually picks well yeah, well, uh, like Nicolas Cage. I was just Cage. about to say that, Sorry, Nick yeah. Cage. That's a yeah. better one. Nicolas Cage has never looked at the script and went, meh. <laughs> Apparently, too, also, uh, he, ne- he, didn't, he didn't support Tulip either. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so she, uh, I, I guess the, the, the laws or however that was back then, they didn't get a whole lot of money out of, out of him in the divorce. Mm-hmm. Well, he definitely was an odd duck. I, I didn't find too much um, else on him other than pervy old man marries a uh, young girl who should have known better. You're young girl, young don't girls don't know better. better. Especially back then. Mm. Even now. You know, teenage, early 20s, seeing a man who's got some fame. Well, I mean, a lot of men like to control their women that back both now today i'm sure but back then i mean i think half my aunts were married before they were 18 yeah yeah very common crazy to think about really uh if he were to come up today i mean i think for him to achieve fame would be super super hard but you know you okay here's this interesting person he get he, like, oh, and then everyone's really like paying attention to him on youtube or tiktok or whatever and then you find out wait a minute he's uh it, it, He's, he's into women 20 years younger than him. Done. Yeah. And yeah. I don't well, think I mean, he's been doing him. that for a while. I, I think his 15 minutes of fame would really be only 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. that the only reason that he lasted several years was because he managed to find a niche that he then got airtime. So people can't well, that we weren't manufacturing celebrities like we are, are nowadays i mean nowadays i mean look at tiger king for god's sake there was the 15 minutes of fame there hey that was that was prime covid tv oh, like yeah. that that if that had come out at any other time it would not have had the traction it did no but everybody was sitting at home watching it and so you know we all know because what exotic. else were we doing yeah we all know joe exotic yeah, sorry about that. I had to chase the dog for a second. That That's makes okay. for great TV, by the way. Uh, <laughs> hey, I enjoy watching the other side of you sometimes, Kirk. <sighs> Thankfully, I'm clothed because God knows you don't want to see like that, like uh, that chamber of secrets. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> over the woods and through the forest to grandmother's house we go. Uh, I think this will also be a first and last. This is going to be the only time where we're going to be looking at somebody who actually died last performing the song. Mm-hmm. Basically on stage. Elvis tried. Well, he almost died like a month before. And he did mm-hmm. collapse doing the same song. And his doctor said, heart attack. knock it off. Like, stop doing this. Mm-hmm. But he couldn't. Yeah. He was too addicted to performing no matter how few people they were. Like, yeah, yeah and he didn't want to. He didn't want to give up the show because he didn't want to let his fans down. But apparently, by the time he took the stage, more than half the audience was gone. Mm-hmm. So, so he didn't want to let his fan ending. down. I mean, like he he did at one point, right? I, I read that he he killed it at the Isle of Wight festival in 1970. Yeah, like yeah, half a million people practically. Yeah. Wow. So I mean. 
his high was pretty damn high. Uh, I, I don't know. I learned a lot more about him. I don't know that that really improved my opinion any. It frankly decreased it somewhat learning of his proclivities let's just say i would have been i would have been more happy to find out that he really was gay yeah he was an interesting monster that's for sure having this weird weird controlling fetish of young girls i mean him him and he actually you know what he never would have been famous he would have been he would have been yeah he would have been he would have been hi i'm chris hansen from dateline nbc that's what would have happened to him (laughs) why don't you have a seat over there yes uh, that's all I got here. I don't know if there's there's any more. You know, there's not as much meat on the bone as you advertised. There's there's some. There's definitely some. But he's just he's happy Neil Young. He's happy Neil Young. <laughs> oh, there you go. All right, uh, Andrea, I believe you're next. Well. That's a deep subject. It is. Um, I was thinking of something maybe a bit more recent. Okay. Ooh. And I was thinking of delicious summertime fruits. Come, my baby. Come, come, come. Oh. They were put there by a man. Presidents of the United States of America. I, I, I kicked around that one. <laughs> you right. kicked that can? Well, no, but that, that, that's, you know, so, but yes. Any video that has ninjas coming out of an orchard is an awesome video. I, I was actually looking more at lump, but this will work too. <laughs> that's also a good one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause millions of peaches, peaches for me. Me- millions of peaches, peaches for free. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Look <laughs> out. Why not? Then, okay. Why not? Enter the I, ninjas. I never did find out whatever happened to them, so that would be sort of an interesting deep dive. Oh, I like that. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of deep dives, you can take a deep dive in a book that I wrote, uh, Chavo Guerrero Instant Classic, uh, about the late great Chavo Senior. Check that out on Amazon. If hey, you, you know what's a great out, Christmas it, present? It might make it to them by Christmas. Well, yep. that, that, yeah, that, that might be for next year's Christmas because this will probably come out in January. But anywho, it could be Happy New Year's. It could be. It could be. Oh, hey, Amazon Prime. Oh, there you go. Absolutely. So check that out if, you, if you're so inclined. Lots of other shows here in the Bucknerverse. Uh, Vinny makes the Hall of Fame case for. Uh, we, the last one just went up of George Steinbrenner. And we did it go up? Yeah, I think it did. And we've got a couple more coming out. I've been doing a few more interviews lately, too. Uh, so check that out. I've got one actually planned this Saturday with uh, a gentleman who wrote a, a biography on George Allen, the famous uh, Washington Redskins coach. Oh, that guy. Yeah, that guy. Okay, well. Yeah, he was very important. He did make the Pro Football Hall of Fame, so yes, he was. Yes, of course he did. That's one of the best things he ever did. Mm-hmm. Also uh, with Melvin Thrower, the son of uh, Willie Thrower, the first NFL, black NFL quarterback. So that was uh, with a great last name for the game. Absolutely. So check those out soon. Uh, I've got another special show coming out soon where it's going to be the elevator for the year. And what's that elevator? The elevator for respective Hall of Fames. Chris Meridian and I are going to be doing that. So who uh, who had their who saw their Hall of Fame chances shoot up the most in 2023? We're going to tell you. We're also going to tell you who sort of like had their Hall of Fame hopes the most in 2023. Chicago Blackhawks, we're looking in your direction. Uh, see, I would ahead. just like to say that I just Googled Instant Classic and um, Amazon says if you order it, Oh, yeah, by the time this is released, then it will be too late. I was going to say, if you order it today, you can get it by the 22nd. But, mm-hmm. alas, you will not be watching this on or before Probably not. December 20th. Probably so, not. Probably the 19th. So. There you go. so buy it for Valentine's Day. Yeah, Valentine's Day. Perfect time to get there and be all wrapped and pretty. Mm-hmm. Do you do any other shows where you cheat on us and talk to other people? There's and make the weekly those Hall of Fame show with Nolan. Uh, there's that, uh, and there's a bunch of other shows that are going to be coming out that I've recorded in the summer. So those will be coming out shortly. Uh, the classic sports review and, uh, the retro football show. Oh, there's yeah. a lot of shows on that where I looked at a lot of old Super Bowls and some very interesting sporting events. Who? Hmm? Interesting Who? sporting events. The, uh, the Super Bowl? Hey. 
Leave the superb owl out of this. I like the owl. I like owls. They're great animals. He's superb. Mm. Superb Almost like this. Oh, he's a superb manager. Hey, goddamn sober for this. Jesus Christ. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we're back, kids. Always happy to be of service. There you go. With that, kids, wherever you are, wherever you may be, make it a great day, because unless the boosts are right, this day ain't coming again. <laughs>